Martin Popoff here. Welcome to a special edition of The Contrarians. This is one of our newsy kind of things that we do. So yeah, I've been uh, I've been sitting on this Bruce Dickinson new album, uh, The Mandrake Project, for over a month now. Um, you know, uh, rightly, uh, the label doesn't want you to review these things until close to uh, release date, but the release date is upon us. Um, I talked to Bruce uh, last month for it. I talked to Roy Z last month for it. So I got kind of the whole story of how this whole thing works. It's uh, it's pretty complicated. I won't go into it all, but but uh, you can read my full feature in Goldmine Magazine uh, coming up, uh, which I think is going to come out just, uh, just after release date. Um, but yes. Uh, this uh, so here's your here's your full review of the album. Uh, this is a record that uh, more or less most of it got done in 2012, so long, long time ago. Um, but that does not uh, that does not stop this record from being, I think, hands down the greatest Bruce Dickinson solo album, better than the Chemical Wedding. Um, I'll get into a, a few of the reasons why, but let's uh, let's just give a little background here. So you know, there's a comic book tie in here as well. Um, you know, this is Bruce Dickinson, of course, lead vocals and uh, and all lyrics. He actually plays a little bit of guitar on here as well. And he's pretty involved in the writing of this album as well. He he writes on guitar. He writes a bit on piano as well. Uh, we've got Roy Z. So Roy Z, of course, is the uh, producer extraordinaire uh, guitarist all over this thing, plays bass on it as well. Um, you know, on in the past, uh, the, these kinds of duties were split, but this is uh, Roy playing bass. Um, he was quite uh, quite happy with himself having done that for he, for uh, for this record. Dave Marino on drums and uh, the Maestro Mysteria on uh, on keyboards. Uh, you know, there's going to be a whole tour. Uh, Tanya is going to be playing bass and uh, they just added a, another uh, a guitarist as well. Um, but yeah, so so we've got a 10 track album here. Uh, you've all heard Afterglow of Ragnarok and you can go to our review uh, of that song. I, I went through it in super detail uh, when it came out as an advanced single. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it. I thought it was uh, was an amazing song. It was a is a great start uh, to, to this album. It's it's quite heavy. And, uh, you know, uh, this is actually one of the heavier songs on the album. This is one of the interesting things about this record. Um, you know, as I said to both Bruce and Roy, it feels like um, it feels like a record for uh, for um, that that uh, where where Bruce would feel comfortable in his shoes being a guy uh, where, you know, I'm sure many of his favorite albums are from the seventies kind of thing, right? He's, he's, uh, he's, you know, it's steeped in the seventies. And I feel like this album has a lot of seventies hard rock to it. And even as I said, at one point, you know, I'm hearing, I'm hearing some Vandergraaff generator and some kind of Gothic sounds in here as well. And there's a lot of music on here that is not particularly heavy, which I found really refreshing on this record. Um, and he said, yeah, metal, metal for grownups, uh, I believe was his, uh, his exact sort of, um, you know, quote from that. And that's how I've always felt. Uh, most of the solo catalog was against the maiden thing where maiden you're, you're kind of constricted in, in certain things. There's a certain personality and a framework and, uh, and, you know, many sort of maiden touch, uh, touch stones that go into a maiden album. Um, Bruce can just kind of be free to do whatever he wants. And I think he does a fantastic job on this. Uh, hats off also to Roy Z's production on here because the production is beautiful. Um, it's really, really kind of resplendent and heavy. And there's a lot of really cool little touches uh, throughout the whole thing. Um, okay, so I, I will go through the tracks just, just kind of quickly here. But we also know, um, you, you know, you've all heard at this point, Rain on the Graves as well. Um, that's one where, um, uh, you know, and, and, you know, talking to Bruce about it, he has, he has a great, again, I'm going to leave this for Goldmine, but he has kind of a great story about how the uh, inspiration for the lyrics came together for this. And there's, there's has to do with going to the Lake District and seeing the, yeah, I, I won't go into it. Uh, like I said, read Goldmine for that. Um, but, uh, but this one reminds me of the recent Deep Purple tune, Vincent Price a little bit. And then uh, by extension, Bruce's send up of Deep Purple, that Confeos track. Um, 
So that's and it's really cool. It's kind of got got a gothic, a bit of a hammer horror thing. And as Roy said, you know, him and him and Bruce share that love of of hammer horror. Uh, but in order. So we've got Afterglow is the, uh, of Ragnarok is the first track, which was the advanced single, which you've heard. Rain on the Graves is the third track, which is the other advanced single, which you've heard. Um, but the second track on it is Many Doors to Hell. I'm just going to go through this quickly and read you my notes that I that I more or less made uh, to prepare for the interview with Bruce, like I say, about a month ago. Um, uh, yeah, melodic, groovy, uh, old school again. Um, there's some Hammond keyboard songs there. Beautiful, beautiful grooves uh, put together by Roy and Dave Moreno on this. A really nice pocket to it. Um, surprising sort of choruses and the chords and the pre-chorus, like really, really mature, um, you know, putting together of a, of a cool hard rock song. Um Bruce's singing on this record is is off the charts. I mean, there's a uh, which. Uh, yeah. Resurrect Resurrection Men, I believe, was the one that I, uh, you know, I, as I said, to him, it's, it's just relentless. I, I, you know, I asked him, are there songs on this album where um, you feel like it was the whole Rush New World Man thing, you know, and Rush famously did this once per album kind of thing put together a song that they thought they couldn't play live because they put too much into it so so with bruce there's songs on here where he is singing so high and so powerful you wonder if he's got to leave those songs out of the set but you know he typically said he's he's a winner right so he he said ah, no there's not nothing like that kind of thing but i i thought Resur resurrection men was a bit like that but this is the one that starts out Kind of like this, uh, a bit of a Latin spaghetti Western sort of sound. And you do not expect anything this fresh and out of the box from a from a Bruce album. I mean, Bruce, I mean, he's a heavy metal guy, right? I mean, we know we know there's some some complication to uh, to uh, balls to Picasso and even skunk works. I mean, yeah, I guess there is quite a bit of dimension to uh, to, to the various Bruce albums. We know he's famously got the one with the one foot, in the hair metal uh, before tattooed millionaire. Um but but honestly speaking, I mean, uh, chemical wedding, accident of birth, and tyranny of souls kind of feel like of a set to me, even though one of them is a concept album. But really, um, I, I feel like there's kind of like a no nonsense modern '90s metal, very heavy metal vibe to it. That is not on this album, uh, except for one track that I'm going to get to. Uh, Fingers in the wounds, uh, more keyboards, piano melody, um, almost like kind of a cross between goth and stadium rock uh, on this one. Eternity has failed, um, so we know that this is the the early version of the song that maiden would take over and as roy said it's kind of like a reverse bring your daughter to the slaughter sort of situation right um but yeah so this is the same as the maiden song but this is a bruce song and this is their version of it and again i i think i think the production on this album just 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 walks all over the production on senjutsu this is a beautiful beautiful um you know gorgeously high fidelity produced sort of album uh, mistress of mercy um to me, this sounds very much like the first track on Accident of Birth, Freak. Um, it's it's really down tuned and grungy sort of metal. It's a it's a bit of an outlier on this album, an album that you would think would 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 sound maybe a lot like Tyranny or or continue that personality. This this does not. This is by far the most. Um, mature and not dated uh not set in a time bruce album it's the most universal or general uh kind of bruce album i would say um triumphant sort of pre-chorus then really kind of atmospheric melodic chorus on it uh face in the mirror mid-tempo almost like a piano ballad so now we're getting towards the end of the album we're at, at track eight um Hammond kind of B3 sounds in here, acoustic guitar uh, in the chorus, um, a very sort of fragile vocal from Bruce, kind of like an actorly painterly vocal from Bruce, where he's singing sort of low. Um, Shadow of the Gods, again, now we're up to track nine, and we've got a long song that is um, is mostly kind of mid-paced and doomy and dark, semi balladic I would say. Uh, that's a weird word to say, eh? Um, but it's it's kind of ballad based, um, but then uh, it gets fast and chugging for the last half um, bit of almost like a thrashy vocal put in here, um, sort of a dirty priest vibe uh, in here, a uh, bit slow thrash uh, at one point, weird, 
weird kind of gutted guitar tone on it. Um, so yeah, they, they are really playing with the sounds on here a lot. And, and yeah, that whole, that whole spaghetti Western thing just blew my mind when I heard it the first time, it was really kind of a cool thing. And then we get to track 10 and this is again, this, this um, underscores the, the craziness of this record that the, the, what you don't expect sort of thing. So literally um, we've got, um, you know, towards the end, even with eternity has failed. Uh, and I would say, I would say fingers in the wound as well. So towards the second half, you're getting some things that are non obviously heavy metal or getting a little bit away from heavy metal here. Um, but with face in the mirror at track eight, a uh, shadow of the gods, seven minutes long at track nine, and then 10, you've got Sonata immortal beloved. So this is a, this is a uh, musically inspired Roy uh, saw Immortal Beloved and uh, and said to Bruce, hey, what do you think about this for an idea? And Bruce goes, well, that's pretty out of the box. I don't know if we can do anything. But then Bruce just they kind of went one take and went really kind of into this. And Bruce says it, it's a it's a uh, it's sort of a. Um, it's a process he he rarely does, but he just said, I'm just going to start talking off the top of my head uh, for this. And what they came up with was uh, was a nearly 10 minute song that is kind of like a dark, hypnotic, slightly maiden-esque, slightly ballad-esque, although Bruce took issue with my, um, you know, calling it that. It's like it's like he said, well, what's a ballad, right? Um, you know, something without without the heavy guitar bit in it kind of thing it was is pretty funny. But but it, he's he's right. I mean, it's uh, it's so creative and well put together and interesting and emotional that, you know, calling something a ballad. I always hated that word. Ballad melodic uh, doesn't really give it give it credence. Um, it's kind of got a mid tempo vibe to it. Uh, and it sort of stays like that the whole time. This is a. This is a long song. Um, so you've got, you've got, you've got, you got 17 minutes, uh, even more. You bring in another song just earlier. You've got 25 minutes uh, towards the end of this album. That, that is this really cool, mature kind of seventies slash goth Vandergraaf generator stadium rock goth. I don't know what to call it. Um, aspect of this record so there's a lot of variety and cool pacing i'm glad that it's only 10 tracks but these are really long tracks uh mostly we've got sixes five sixes um and and yeah like i say i mean i think already what you've heard from this album with the two advanced singles is uh is the livelier stuff on here which is kind of interesting um I think it gets more moody and introspective. And uh, like I say, it's somebody sort of comfortable where they come from uh, with lots and lots of, of seventies hard rock and maybe a bit of prog, but there's, there's not really any prog on here. There's no crazy craziness, right. In terms of time signatures and things like that. Um, but but in terms of arrangements and and nice little touches uh crossed with early 80s sort of things and just a very general interesting creative um like i say super mature vibe on here um i think mandrake project absolutely or the mandrake project is absolutely um the very best bruce dickinson uh album so uh be interested to hear what you guys think. Um, as I'm as I'm talking here, I think we're a week away or something from the from the release date. Um, but uh, but yeah, it is upon us. Um, I think you guys are really gonna like this album. Um, it is uh, like I say, very creative and quite unexpected in a lot of places uh, from Bruce. Uh, so there you go. Um, be interested to hear what you guys think in the comments. Uh, you can join our uh, Patreon situation if you like. Uh, that gets you onto these panels we've been doing. I, I find those super rewarding being part of those because a lot of great concepts come up. One we just had go up on Queen the Game. I loved all, all the really interesting stuff said about the game, you know, over the course of an hour by these wise music swamis who are part of um, our Patreon situation. But uh, there you go. Um, so to prepare yourself for this album, go, go take another list into Afterglow of Ragnarok and uh, Rain on the Graves. <laughs>